Howdy everybody and welcome back to the Cast Gaming Channel. James here once again and uh, I've got another Napoleonic Total War 3 mod replay for you guys today. But before we go ahead and get into it, I just want to remind everybody I am sponsoring a Napoleonic Total War 3 mod tournament. It will be a 4 versus 4 tournament with a first prize of $100 and I'd also like to interview the winning team. So if you're interested in that or you'd like to send me any replays, go ahead and send something to the Cast Gaming Channel at gmail.com or head to the description box below, click the link to my Discord, send something in the replay section, you might be featured on the channel. Or if you're interested in the tournament, say hello, say that you're interested in the tournament and we'll get you going with that. I'd like to get about 6 to 10 teams together as quickly as possible and once I do I'll go ahead and get everything started. And uh, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe guys, I really appreciate you helping the channel grow getting the name out there and I'd like to be able to do more battles for you guys in the future so with that let's go ahead and get into today's match it's going to be a four versus four match on Bohemia 3b this replay was plucked from the Lord's discord courtesy of Drogo staff who's actually been featured before on my channel so thank you very much for this replay and for the coalition faction today we're gonna have austria here on the road as faction number one we're gonna have the united kingdom peninsular army as army number two for the coalition followed by russia as faction number three for the coalition it's gonna be the 1812 army and piedmont sardinia 1814 is going to be the fourth faction for the coalition on the Imperial side today, we're going to have Poland as army number one, followed by 1809, 1812 France, going to be 11 pointer France faction today. Let's see if I can find the other two for you guys. Wurzenberg is going to be Imperial army number three, followed by a potentially another 11 pointer France. Okay, so we're going to have two 1809 to 1812 Frances today. All right. So as far as the tactical breakdown on this map goes, let's go head over back to the coalition side. Uh, the coalition does not have to attack. Uh, basically, what I would recommend is taking these three single pointer houses in uh, the kind of center right of the map taking the hills behind and on the side of the town here you can see that there's a vineyard on this hill if you can run some cab up to take this high ground that would be ideal and then uh, maybe potentially hold this house right here maybe send a unit or two but you can see there's an excellent high ground up here there's high ground in the center to protect uh if you can get up there quick enough to take it away from your enemy but essentially all along the ridge of the houses here for the coalition's position is just a bunch of high ground it's just a big ridge that runs across the map uh, it's excellent for defending especially with three one pointers all positioned in this town it's an excellent place to defend so essentially just converge your armies or at least that's what I would recommend and basically hold the high ground as best you can uh, if you have to retreat let's say you're able to take this high ground position and you have to retreat you can fall back into town get the line battles going inside the town by the houses uh, you could potentially um, if you had to fall back from this high ground here again you just fall back to this ridge line across the way and you're essentially good to go um, so you don't really have to attack you can attack if you want to as a coalition um, but I don't necessarily recommend it giving up the high ground and excellent defensive position if you've already got it uh, for the Imperial since they don't start out with as many pointers as close to them I have a couple option options for them uh, just based off of the starting points uh, do your best to converge your armies as quickly as possible and then pick a side to attack uh, this is probably the best side in terms of not fighting by houses so if you're not a big fan of fighting by houses like this there's only a single one pointer around here you could potentially get some guys through the woods around here on top of the ridge line get behind the coalition lines if they form them and then 
do your best to storm across this ridge and then head towards the town. Uh, you also have some protection if you're going to attack in the center section here with this force being there along on along with the elevation. Uh, so that is in your favor. The other thing you can try is hitting the far left side of the coalition. And the reason I recommended this, even though this is closer to the houses and I don't necessarily want to be fighting by this heavily defensive position, even with this uh, ridge line, is the fact that uh, Piedmont's line, or at least Piedmont, has some um, armies on this side and their original starting position was on this side. So since they are a seven pointer faction and you have Poland along with an 11 pointer 1809 France, you could potentially roll up Piedmont very quickly. However, you would have to be careful because Russia's cavalry is here to be able to back up, back up Piedmont and Russia does have some infantry of its own. Not a whole lot. I believe they went more for a cav build today. Um, but I think your best bet well, you have those, you have either options, let's say. Whatever you feel would be your best option. Um, I probably, seeing that Piedmont is starting out on the right side, if I had known Piedmont was not coming, it looks like they're coming into this village right here, or at least coming up the road. If they're going to fight in the house, in the houses, and you choose to attack this area, uh, attacking Piedmont would probably be your best option since it's the weaker army. However, if it does get support, it's going to be difficult for you. Um, UK looks like it's coming up along with Austria. It might be better served by just having two armies getting around the flank of Austria here on open ground, and they would not they would not have the elevation advantage on you. So it's, it just depends on how you're feeling, what your army composition is, um, where Piedmont Sardinia is actually going to end up here. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but... Typically, as I said before, I'm going to avoid this three pointer or this three house uh, section in the center of the map. I think I would either go with the extreme left option all the way over here trying to take out Piedmont or the extreme right option wrapping around Austria. So as Poland is coming up, looks like Poland's going to try and enter the town here. Poland is an excellent cavalry faction. Um, I don't believe they have any heavy cav, I, uh, but most of their other cav is pretty darn good. France, one of the 1809 to 1812 fraction, factions looks like it's coming around to the right flank. Just be careful, guys, that you don't overextend yourselves, um, that you've got some support, and then you can come to your allies' aid. Uh, good on Wurtzenberg. He's getting some artillery up to the front, some horse artillery going to be able to take some shots off on the cavalry uh, be careful again Poland here as well you're advancing alone the United Kingdom is already in the house uh, Piedmont is coming up for some support there is some cavalry here uh, that could potentially be a thorn in your side I'm trying to find some the other French facts and we've got some cavalry stretch across the way here uh, be careful, guys. You're a little bit out of position. Might even be outnumbered by all this cav in this area. And this is what I was talking about. Houses are very difficult to take. Uh, Poland sent in a grenadier faction. It was not enough to take out the house. They're sending in some light cav to chase off Piedmont. Be careful, guys. You're near a house. United Kingdom is going to be able to get some free shots off on you, followed by this line infantry as well. United Kingdom is coming to reinforce the town. Not a bad idea whatsoever because Poland is coming in there. United Kingdom should be able to win those against the line battle. Got some more French cav forming on the far right side. Be careful, gentlemen. Uh, there is some horse artillery from Austria on this section. Don't want to take some unnecessary damage if you don't have to. Poland, Poland was actually able to take the house. Looks like they sent in another unit. 
Uh, good on them. And this is going to put the coalition in a difficult position. They still got a couple more houses centered in the town. Uh, if Sardinia, if Piedmont, Sardinia, and the UK start pushing up against this Polish faction, um, Poland is going to be in trouble. He doesn't really have a whole lot of support at the moment. I think he's moving up a bit prematurely. France is going in for some charges here against the line. Be careful, France. There is a lot of cavalry on the side. Piedmont coming up with reinforcements. There's some Russian reinforcements that will be able to form square. You lost the battle in the center here. Uh, Poland's flank is now going to be exposed. And just as I say that, Piedmont's charging in some cavalry into Poland. I think Poland's overextending themselves at the moment. They don't have any support. I don't see... All I see is some artillery and some cavalry from Wurttemberg. I don't see any infantry from either French faction. Meanwhile, Poland's going to be taking on two, two coalition armies by itself. Uh, if anything, Poland, if France was going to go in for a charge on top of the hill, you should have thrown your cav in with France's charge. Piedmont's coming in, trying to get at some Poland... Uh, Poland line infantry, but Poland's managed to push them back. Well done. Looks like uh, another light cav units being routed by some Polish infantry. Piedmont's getting its its units into line. Meanwhile, fighting by the house. This is not a good position. Be careful, Poland. You're running your infantry. You're going to tire them out if, if you're not careful. We finally have got some French infantry coming up. Looks like a grenadier unit. Poland's having to retreat at this moment. They're not going to be able to take the hill. They're going to be outnumbered and outflanked. However, they have a decent position uh, with this house being here. It's going to be at least somewhat helpful, uh, even though they can't take this hill. What they really need is some French support to move up quickly on the flank of Piedmont. And if they can do that, then Poland can just fall back, use this house as a pivot point uh, to retreat, hold it as best they can while the UK... Um, while they engage UK and Württemberg could come up, take the attention of the United Kingdom while France wraps around Piedmont and Poland assists. Uh, France on this side could and should take the attention of Austria in the center here. Uh, make it so that Austria cannot send any reinforce reinforcements to the United Kingdom. I don't see any French infantry on this right side. So that worries me a little bit. Maybe they're taking a bit too much time to get across. Uh, it's good to see that now France is uh, finally moving up, finally joining Poland. Uh, it's Poland's still going to have a bit of a difficult time with their armies because they have the loss of the high ground. Uh, I think these units need to move back a little bit, get them in the line, uh, get these units into line as well, maybe get some support against the United Kingdom. It's good to see that Württemberg is taking the attention. I think that's a really good move. Austria is pushing up some infantry. I think he's might, maybe trying to scout or maybe a try, it's a delaying force uh, for the extreme left side since I don't see the other French faction. France is getting some more troops into line here. Russia is moving up its cavalry to outflank uh, France. And this is a mistake. Don't have your... Don't have your uh, flank be not um, unable to form square because they're getting charged right now. And you can see this is the penalty for that. And this is a big penalty for, uh, for French armies not being able to form square. I don't understand why people just do not take more squareable infantry, especially if you're playing as the French factions. Uh, Poland's got a couple units routing it looks like it might have been some militia units uh, upon the hill I think that was a mistake they lost those units unnecessarily France needs to push up with some squareable units extremely quickly if it's got any cavalry or Poland has any cavalry it needs to be sent to this left flank to be able to check this Russian cavalry it initially seemed that at least France and Poland were working together but it doesn't seem like they're doing it as well as they could Piedmont is moving up some more infantry to outflank France on this side. France needs to extend its line battle. If it's too much, 
if it's being surrounded to uh, or unable to, then France need to get, needs to get itself into line quickly. Fall back, get yourself in the line, gentlemen. Uh, wrap around whatever is left of Piedmont. Get a couple squares on the flank and have one in behind your infantry to at least cover yourself. Wurzenberg is engaging the United Kingdom. Get some local superiority on this unit right here from the United Kingdom. United Kingdom is going to be in a world of hurt. Uh, even though Wurzenberg is a smaller pointer faction. Because they're able to get the superiority. They're able to fight on the high ground. Where the United Kingdom is it has to fight on the low ground. If I was the United Kingdom I would fall back. Take cover behind the houses at the moment. Austria on this left side is still not engaged. I don't know where the other French faction is. Be careful, France. You don't run your army too much. And get them exhausted. Uh, good for France. Finally extending his line. He's finally got some squareable infantry units up. Uh, looks like he's got some additional units behind the line to protect. Uh, he, I would recommend placing a squareable unit um, in this kind of center section or behind the lines if you can. We've got some uh, coalition cav wrapping around the back. Uh, be careful, your artillery is in trouble. It doesn't look like you have anything supporting it. Check along the Piedmont lines here on top of the ridge. Check out this Piedmont charge along the Polish line. France is getting charged in its center by some extra cab. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. If your units cannot form square, they're going to be in trouble. An 11-pointer uh, France faction should not be having this much trouble against a 7-pointer army, even with the hill advantage. We've got Württemberg wrapping around the United Kingdom. Austria is coming to the aid of its ally. I don't know where the f other French army is. It needs to be pushing up. Get into the battle. Württemberg is destroying the United Kingdom. Meanwhile, France 1811 on this side is being pushed back. Uh, everybody on this left side of, of the Imperial faction needs to retreat. Get back behind uh, to the safety of its own hill. And then support Württemberg's push here against the United Kingdom. Because Württemberg's the one having the success. Uh, France needs to be pushing up on the side of the United Kingdom right now. Could get the local superiority. Wrap around uh, the United Kingdom right here and route the center position. Even though Austria has some supporting units, uh, it's, it'll have to com commit them piecemeal. The rest of France, if it has any more infantry, can push up upon this hill. Engage Austria on this line here. There is some cavalry over here. Um, but if France can form square, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Württemberg doing an excellent job getting rid of the United Kingdom. I'm hoping that France on this side can reorganize themselves, fall back upon the hill. Piedmont, Piedmont doing an excellent job uh, taking advantage of, the, of its enemy's weaknesses. Fall back this line infantry, France. It's not doing you any good. It's getting charged by some Piedmont Dragoon units. It's taking artillery fire upon the hill. France is pushing up. It's finally starting to wrap around Austria. Uh, continue to push up, guys. Wrap around Austria on this side. Take this unit. Wrap around. Um, either, either side continue to roll up the armies here against Austria. He may want to leave it here just so that this cavalry will not necessarily be able to charge straight behind the lines. 
If you have any additional cavalry, you could place it behind your infantry to support any and uh, counter charge any enemy cavalry. Uh, if you have any cavalry from the United King, there is a couple good places that you could charge. There is a heavy cav, or I'm sorry, a light cav unit from Wurzenberg on the side protecting some skirmishers on both ends. However, you could get into the lines if you had a couple cavalry units. Wurzenberg probably does not have enough cavalry, although I can't see it at the moment. Looks like Poland charged in some light cav against some cuirassiers. Not enough to be able to route it. There might be just too much Russian presence on this side. Potentially with this infantry unit. In order for this cav to be effective. Uh, push up your infantry here. Maybe you can get some free shots. On the Russian cav. Don't commit your units piecemeal like this. You need to charge together at very least. Good job getting some flanking charges here on the Russian Cav, Poland. Good job. Uh, get your guys out of here so that they don't get hit by this square. Looks like Poland was able to send some units around the other side of Russia and was able to uh, take out the Russian Cav. Good on Poland. Well done. You still got Wurzenberg here on top of the hill firing down upon the United Kingdom. UK is being forced to retreat. United Kingdom is wrapping around. Excellent placement of artillery here, guys. Able to get some excellent fire down in the valley of the town. Well played, sir. Uh, good job pushing here as France. You're able to push away the uh, Austrian army. At this point, guys, do not stop giving chase to the Austrian army. Uh, peel off a couple units, put them into the fight against Austria, place them upon this hill or wrap around the flank of Austria on this side. Uh, just leave a couple units as a rear guard against Austria. You're pushing out way too much. Your, uh, your attention will probably be way too divided between uh, these Austrian units, this cavalry, and this other flank. Uh, so just be careful that you know where you can pay atten your attention to you could probably move up this infantry unit just a little bit against these guys if you wanted to uh, maybe even move up this infantry units farther into the flank of the United Kingdom looks like Poland still has this house with some infantry units here uh, France is just keeping Piedmont at bay with Poland's help If Poland has any cavalry yet left, he could probably charge them at this particular retreating unit, force it to form square in order to give time for France to chase it and run it down. There's still some, let's see, one, two. We've got a heavy cav unit, a light cav, and a dragoon unit uh, still in effect for Russia. So Russia is not out of the fight. I think leaving this cav unit right here is a mistake. He might just be taking fire from uh, this house. Uh, get this unit back. Get your general over to the far left side. Uh, move your cav units behind your infantry here in order to support the back of not only yourself, but your, um, your ally. Got some, let's see, some 12 pounders upon the hill. Take a look at the Polish perspective here. Let's see if we can get another volley. Reload, gents. Reload those muskets.
Poland pushing up. Looks like France and Poland are going for another attack against Piedmont. Uh, meanwhile, the far left of France is being charged. This is why uh, it would have been beneficial for F Poland to chase down this the Russian infantry unit that was over here originally. And it's beneficial for your units to form square so that you don't get charged like this. France, I think, is overextending themselves at this point. I don't think this is going to be enough infantry to defeat uh, Piedmont, especially with the inability of some of these units to form square. We just saw them get charged once again by some Russian cav. Check out the center section here again. France is moving up some Dragoon units in, orbit, in order to support this push in the center section. Uh, don't just leave your cavalry here, guys. Put it into the fight if you're going to attack. And he's going after the skirmishers, I guess. I don't think this is the best use of the Dragoon unit. If I was using this Dragoon unit, I would have gone through the, behind it. I would have either charged the left, far left, or I would have gone behind, get into the back of this Austrian infantry right away while I pushed up my infantry on this side, uh, along with the one that was already engaged. Uh, get your Dragoons out of there, Austria. They're in between a couple squares now. You could have left them behind the lines, gone after this artillery on the hill. The coalition's in trouble. Coalition's in some serious trouble in the center. France, you need to extend your line infantry on this far left side. You can use a couple units or push up your general here to support your units here. But wrap around, get on the flank of the coalition. I don't understand other than the fact that you're scared of this, this calf right here. Uh, if Poland has any cav left, it should be sent to your center to help support that push. The other thing here is uh, if you guys cannot win this battle against Piedmont, then just fall back to the center ridge, support whatever is going on the center section for your allies, and you'll be able to destroy each army in detail. Austria has disintegrated on this side. There are a few units left. Württemberg can push up its infantry against the United Kingdom on this side. It can push up its infantry to hit Austria. France can continue to push up its infantry as well. Careful you guys don't overextend yourself by getting hit um, by too much enemy cavalry. Let's see if these Austrian units over here can form square. Looks like at least one of them can. Not sure what happened to the artillery that was placed on this hill here. Maybe it was repositioned or maybe it got charged. See what's going over on this left side. It looks like France is crumbling. Might have got hit from behind by a cav charge from, from Russia. And this is why I mentioned earlier you should have had... Poland pushing up its cav to support the back lines of France to begin with. I think France still had enough left in order to take on Piedmont if it wrapped around the side. It just needed some support from some cavalry. Poland has been way too passive, I think, with its cavalry. It's kept it in its reserve for its own army. And that has not been beneficial for team play. Uh, now this attack is basically died Poland's gonna have to be on the defensive he's gonna have to fall back as quickly as he can he's gonna have to uh, pray that his allies can hold and defeat its opponents in the center and right section of their flank the 
Wurzenberg could push up some more infantry now, wrap around what's left of the United Kingdom. Uh, that's exact. France should be supporting Wurzenberg's push here in the center if he can. That's where they're weakest. There's also an opportunity to charge some Dragoons or some cavalry into this line infantry or try and get the artillery upon the hill. Wurzenberg uh, is a, continue to be in, aggressive here. There's not very many UK units left. They're close to routing. And once you get them, you can push into this town or you can help outflank Aus against Austria um, for France on the right flank. France fall what's left of France on the side is falling back along with what's left of Poland. Uh, good job. Keep your armies intact as best you can. Continue to push Wurzenberg. You can really help out your ally. You can get rid of Austria here. There's an opportunity um, to defeat the armies in detail here. And see France on this side placed. A squareable infantry unit on its flank, and once it got charged, it was able to form square and then support itself with some, some cavalry. France is charging some more heavy cav into the backs of Austria. Be careful. This unit has formed square. Just go for an infantry charge at this point against the squared infantry unit. Uh, France is going to be able to roll up or at least uh, defeat this last Austrian unit, especially if it breaks the square formation, which it looks like it's done. You can now put your cav unit back into the Austrian line unit and finish it off. And these units from France can now charge upon this hill. Try and take out this heavy cav. Get at this artillery up here with your additional heavy cav units or this dragoon unit. Don't even bother with the house on the far left. Wrap around what's left of Austria. Have Wurzenberg push. Poland's going in for a couple charges here on some Cav. It's getting charged on its flank, although this is kind of a weakened unit. I don't know if it's going to be enough to destroy Poland's army here. Poland cannot defeat this Cav mass with this extra infantry and square formation with some additional support. It's going to have to retreat. Looks like Russia's losing at least one unit. There it goes. The morale from the second unit is very low as well. It will probably route just as I say that it does. Wurzenberg is pushing up against Austria. Excellent move here. This is what I had suggested earlier. Once Wurzenberg had gotten rid of the United Kingdom, needed to push, help support France's attack on this side, wrap around Austria, uh, potentially even go through uh, the village here, although Austria does control this house. So good on avoiding a battle at the house. Just be careful. The, there is still this artillery on the hill. France needs to come over. Do what it can to destroy what's left of this Austrian cab. Poland is still holding its position. Now, this since this has swung back and Russia has run out of cavalry, if Piedmont comes and tries to attack uh, the Imperials are going to have the high ground next to the house it's going to be uh, a more favorable fight for the Imperials a nice hit on the enemy general done does not look like he was able to get the general Uh, Wurzenberg, you need to continue to push against Austria. Once you guys defeat Austria or whoever is left, you can wrap around uh, Piedmont if you so choose. Uh, or if you really wanted to, you could go support um, against Piedmont as it stands. Uh, Poland, be careful. You don't want to engage by yourself and you're on the low ground. Retreat. Fall back, guys. Fall back.
However, it does look like that Poland is actually able to push back Piedmont, but Piedmont, Piedmont I think, sees that uh, the French are advancing again on this side. Uh, looks like they're going to be in trouble now that they really don't have any cavalry left except for this uh, exhausted unit with low morale. It's going to be a difficult fight. Uh, Wurzenberg, be careful. It's difficult to take houses. You've already got a low morale unit in here. Let's see, you got about 90 men versus about 83 men. These men are going to tire out. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to win this fight. Uh, this infantry would be better served uh, taking out Austria or helping against Piedmont on the flank. France is continuing to push up against Austria and whatever is left of the United Kingdom on this side probably going to be able to take out these guns if they're able to get to them pretty quickly and Wurzenberg was actually able to take this house I'm surprised well done guys don't forget to turn yourselves around fire into these units right here Piedmont still holding though falling It's about to be charged here by this Ulani unit. Oh no, it's not looking good. Line units routing all over the place for Piedmont. Be careful Piedmont, there's still this cab in your line. It's gonna be able to get these art artillery pieces. Oh, that was gonna be Piedmont saving grace if they can keep their artillery, but unfortunately, it's just not what's happening. They're folding very quickly on this side. Getting their final couple infantry units charged by Poland and France. Uh, this artillery could be used against this potential infantry right here, or it could be used in support against this infantry right here looks like some heavy cab is charging into some dragoons trying to protect its artillery was able to route the dragoon unit unfortunately it's probably going to get charged by this extra cab that france still has in the back Cav charge versus cav charge here. We've got a couple of heavy cav units engaged. I don't think Austria is going to be able to win this fight. It just does not have as many men as uh, France does. And there it goes. It's routing. There is this infantry unit. It's probably going to wrapped up by this heavy cav. The artillery is gone. There really is not any more hope left for Austria. Just got Cav left in the lines here. And it looks like it's going to be an Imperial victory today. So it looked like Piedmont put up one heck of a struggle against uh, France and Poland's combined might. He did have some excellent support from Russia, but it just was not enough to hold Again, so much infantry, again, so much cavalry. Meanwhile, the, the higher his higher pointer uh, teammates just could not hold out against um, a Wurzenberg and France. So it was a good game by everybody. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the end. All right, like I said, good game to everybody. Uh, I'll go ahead and... Go through the kill list for you. It was an Imperial victory today. Drogo staff was commanding Piedmont Sardinia had 1,180 kills. Ayusitil, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, was playing as the United Kingdom with 492 kills. Uh, Nero was playing as Russia with 1,046. Mr. Pepe was playing as Austria with 700 kills. And Thundernut was playing as Wurzenberg with 1,230 kills. Dan the Dan was playing as Poland with 1,706. McPanzer was playing as 11 Pointer France Faction with 1,359 kills. Felipe was playing as the other 
France 11 pointer faction with 715 kills. I'll go ahead and go down through the battle stats for you. Looks like this light cav unit had the most kills. Uh, and I'll just go down the list here for you. All right, guys. Uh, good game to everybody. And thank you guys for watching. I will catch you on the next one.